Hello YouTube, welcome to the next video on the Discovery V8 engine rebuild. In this video I get the engine back in the car, get it all put together, all the ancillaries on, basically get it very nearly ready to go, with the exception of getting the fluids in it and uh, a few jobs like that. Preparations have been made, the engine mounts uh, are on, well, the engine mount brackets if you like. And I've done a few things in the engine bay to, to make it ready. So I think it is time to drop that engine in there now. Here goes, time lapse time. Uh, this was quite a moment, getting the engine back in. It's been months and months of work. Um, but this video only shows you a fraction of the story. I get the car, the engine in, offer it down into the, where it goes, but I didn't actually get it connected to the bell housing in this particular bit of time lapse. Uh, but it went on for hours after this, and I was trying to figure out why the engine would not connect. I could get all the bolts in between the bell housing and the engine, but I couldn't close the gap, about sort of 5 to 10 mil the gap, it just wouldn't close up. I'll explain in a minute what that was. But uh, at this point I was very happy. <laughs> and in the next maybe 10 minutes or something, I became very frustrated. <laughs> it's not easy to work on this car. Uh, particularly at the back of the engine there. It's a wide engine, of course. And uh, there's a lot of stuff crammed in there. It's quite far back, too. So a real nightmare getting those bolts in. Uh, and then when it fights you like that, oh, it's demoralising. <laughs> anyway, I'll explain all in just a minute. It is uh, midnight, and I've been working on this for hours, and it's finally in. It was a real nightmare wrestling match to get that thing in there the um whatever it's called spigot sticking out the torque converter that lines up in the center of the crankshaft was a very tight fit and it took me a long time to figure that out so i sanded it uh, to reduce its diameter fraction and it finally went in and then uh, and then it's just a nightmare getting all the bolts in because there's so many of them it's a flipping long job and a horrible car to work on um but it's in there, I'm very pleased. Now I've just got to connect everything up. So the engine mounts are in tight and the gearbox is uh, is attached properly. On with the other stuff now. Right, first was uh, the front part of the cooling pack. It's a um, air conditioning condenser, or radiator if you like. The old one was full of holes and obviously the air conditioning was not working. So in preparation for hopefully getting it working one day, I put a new uh, aircon radiator in there. It's not working yet, it's not gassed up yet, but then there's the two oil coolers, the transmission cooler and the engine oil cooler. And then the new radiator, I've got a new radiator as well. I want the cooling to be spot on in this engine because it's one of the contributing factors that leads to liner failure. So a new radiator was definitely the, uh, on the cards. Cooling pipes down at the bottom of the radiator, there's a connection that goes up from the bottom of that Y piece. Like three into one merge collector if you like in the cooling system, up to the... Um, LPG reducer and the heater matrix. And then the nightmare job, anyone who owns one of these vehicles will know, the, the coil packs at the back of the engine bay are absolute pain in the ass. You can't get them out with the leads on it. So you have to put it in and then put all the leads on. And it's quite a, a job, I have to say. It's a nightmare. So now I'm tying all the injector wiring back and um, getting that ready for the inlet manifold. Uh, the new gasket on there. Well, not a new gasket, the old gasket actually. And then the inlet manifold can go on. Lots of stuff on this one with the LPG solenoids and things, lots of gubbins to go back on. And then the uh, coil pack mount bolts go on the back as well. I'm taking a break from putting things back on the engine uh, and I've taken this off. And the reason is uh, the coolant system has been got over with a fine tooth comb. We've got a new thermostat, new radiator, obviously everything in the engine has been checked, all the coolant pipes have been checked. So uh, I'm not going to stop. Uh, there, I'm not going to let this thing leak. Can you see the pink residue around the bottom there? This is a heater plate which stops carb icing or throttle body icing. Um, so I'm going to have that off, clean it and uh, reseal it. I don't want any leaks. So that's a quick job and then I'll get back into putting this thing back together. All done. You can see a tiny bit of black sealer um, oozing out there. Um, it wasn't flat really, so you take the bolts off and just hold it up against the light and you can see gaps. So as is pretty normal with this sort of thing that four bolt arrangement would have been better but three means that these these edges bend up slightly and leave you a gap in there so 
I've sort of sanded it flat. Uh, and in the end, I, I didn't use a flat piece. I just used my finger and held it up to the light until uh, the pressure underneath my finger on the sandpaper, I could take surfaces down a little bit more than others. So held it up against the light and all the gaps were uh, very much smaller, if, if not gone, really. And then a bit of uh, this sealer on there and tighten them up again. So she's good to go. It's just final hoses now. There's a there's a pre, uh, crankcase, was it a positive crankcase ventilation system. There's a modification to this. as a catch can, and I'm going to try and fix it because it's useless. But a lot of those hoses went back on at this point. And there's a big LPG hose across in front of the screen right now. Um, the belt on the front, serpentine belt. Uh, it looks like all the accessories are on there. Ancillaries, sorry. Whatever, the belt drives those things. Uh, they're all on there. There's an idler going on as well, and a tensioner. And then on goes the belt. Uh, and then it's kind of plastic covers and the last few uh, pipes to connect, really. Uh, there's a large cover that goes over the radiator and sort of connects the top of the radiator to the front of the car. Uh, the fan can then go on as well. There we go. And then trying to neatly tuck that top hose into the original plastic uh, fan and radiator cover, making it look reasonably OEM for that new thermostat. That's it, folks. It's all back together now. For the purposes of uh, keeping an eye on everything, I'll leave the bonnet off uh, for now. You can see the lights on the grill. Maybe you can't. The lights on the grill are still missing, uh, as there's a fan that needs to go in here. Uh, so I've ordered some Araldite to repair the fan. Um, some of the magnets have come loose within the housing, so I'm going to Araldite them all back in, uh, and then I can put it back in. It's just the air conditioning fan. So that's it. I've left this hose clamp off. I'm going to pull that hose off. Uh, to bleed, that's the highest point in the coolant circuit. Uh, and there's another high point here, so that one already has a bleed. This one does not, so this is the hose to the LPG reducer and to the um, heater matrix. So I'm going to bleed that one, probably while it's running, and that one. I'll try them both while I'm filling it up, try them again when I'm running it. So the next thing is, oh sorry, I haven't finished that one yet, that hose needs to go on there as well. I'm going to fill it up with oil. I'm going to leave the LPG ECU disconnected so that intercepts the signal to the petrol injectors so it won't fire up basically uh, or it won't even try and fire up. The plugs are out so I'm going to spin it for a period of time. I've already done this on the work uh, on the engine stand um, just to prime it with oil again. The radiator is empty. I've got this high zinc content oil to go in now for the first uh, few hours of driving. So I'm going to prime it with the plugs out and then I'm going to put this on, fill up the coolant, uh, put the spark plugs in and the leads on and then um, that's it then, start it up. I'm so sorry folks, but I'm going to leave it there. I will try and get the next video out very soon for you, which will have the first start in it. I hope you're enjoying the series. I hope the next video goes well. You will see, it might not be plain sailing. Thanks for tuning in folks, I hope to see you again.